Welcome to this book review by Blackie. That's me. That was my nickname when I was a kid. It wasn't a family nickname. That was what people in the neighborhood called me because I am brown. I think I have a beautiful milk chocolate color brown. Some people didn't like it. To a lot of other people, I was way dark and I was blacky. Color runs deep in America, okay? So keep watching to find out what book I'm talking about today and what me being called blacky has to do with it. Hey y'all, it's Kyla Denanyo and today we are talking all about color politics, love stories, donating your money, all of these com convoluted things in one book, okay? And I wasn't expecting it, and I think that's why I absolutely fell in love with the book, all right? Today we're talking about the book, Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? All right, the author of the book is Crystal Smith-Paul. The genre of the book is fiction. The theme of the book is suspense historical literature, okay? I was not expecting this book to be about race, politics, and color, and passing, right? Passing is what you would call an African-American person, sometimes even a Creole person, whose features are very pale, their skin does not have as much melanin as my skin would have, their hair is very fine, their nose may not be as wide. They have all of these Caucasian looking features that would make them pass for being a white person. There's no better way to describe that, okay? Kitty Carr had to learn how to even act like a white woman, not in terms of, oh, I have a high-pitched voice and I'm all ditzy, but like how to be entitled, how to go into a store and expect people to wait on me, right? Because she grew up with her mother and her mother was a black-facing person. There are people who are African-American. There are people who are Creole, which is French and Cajun, mixed together who you would not think were black, right? And we have all these terms, quadroon, uh, all the mulatto, all of these terms for the people that have this really fair skin. But this book is about that. I did not know that. And I'm telling you this not to deter you from reading the book, but because I thought it was about a book like old Hollywood. Like I saw the cover and it's giving the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So I was like, okay, let's see what's going on here. Well, Kitty Carr is an actress, a famous white woman who makes it. She earns an Academy Award. She is on the grandest stage. She falls in love. She wants to have children, but she knows that she can't. Why can't she? Because your genes make up your genetic code, which makes up your person. Kitty Carr knows what she grew up around. What she grew up around was her mom taking her to North Carolina big cities and taking her to the movies and her mom acting like she was the nanny, right? Because the brown skinned people and the slaves, well, they were brown skinned, but the slaves would be the people who would raise the kids. They would be the ones that would feed the kid. A lot of times they would be the ones that would even nurse the children because, you know, the plantation owners didn't want to ruin their bodies by doing all that stuff. And so she was raised to kind of be hiding, to be like, oh, I'm with my mom, but I can't call her my mom because I have to call her the nanny because we wouldn't have all these things if they thought that I was black. She grew up with the two lives. This is truly a tale of two lives because she grew up with all of the like neuroses and insecurities of being a black female, but she had to learn how to present as a white woman and to have whatever arrogance or entitlement that they would have, right? And I say would have because I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I didn't say it, Crystal Smith Paul said it, okay? She had to learn how to walk into a room in the 1940s and command respect because she grew up watching her mother and her mother didn't do that. Her mother could not teach her how to do that, right? And so fascinating, fascinating read. One of my absolute favorite things about this book is that love is not unconditional and this book explains that perfectly, okay? People call things a coming of age story. This had multiple layers of being a coming to age story and I absolutely thought it was fascinating, all right? So if you're interested in other books that aren't quite this deep but are very, very good, check out this review here about a book, We Are Not Like Them, all right? I think you will really, really enjoy it. And it, it has a similar theme of friends who grow up in different shades and, and what their experiences are like, okay? I'll see you in the next review.